Well, hey everyone, how's it going? Sean here with another Genetry Solar video. This is a low resolution video, so I can get it uploaded pretty fast. Uh, but I just wanted to give you an update on some things that are going on here and uh, just kind of show you what I've got going on. So, my battery management system from Chargery, as recommended by many of you, and thank you very much, should be here uh, next Monday, in which case I can start hooking this up. So that I can start actually using it. Because right now both batteries are sitting here not doing anything. And uh, in the meantime, I am obviously building my stand here. And uh, I am lucky to have someone named Sid in my corner. Because he... he I mean, this stuff is second nature to him, obviously. But he's just... Uh, you know, I was sitting here trying to figure out exactly how I was going to connect the BMS, connect the two batteries together, etc., etc. And uh, I basically, basically how it works is, I didn't want to hack up these wires. I really didn't. I was trying at all costs not to, to basically take these wires and break them all apart, cut them, and things like that. My initial plan was to take both wire harnesses these are the bms harnesses and uh tie them together by splicing them together and then running that to the actual bms but there's a problem with that number one if i needed to move these batteries for whatever reason i would have to cut them up again Number two, I just am not comfortable using T-splices or anything else like that for something that is as serious as this. I'd rather it be a stock, you know, from the factory plug that I can just plug into something, right? So, what uh, Sid came up with, which uh, to him is just, you know, he probably dreams about this stuff because he's pretty good at it. Um, what he came up with was we found the these end connectors here so i don't have to you know unsolder this from the board we found this exact connector right here and he's actually creating a board a um a, an actual circuit board he's actually making one that will allow me to plug these two into that board and then it'll run to a different plug that will connect to the bms so, you know, you can imagine that, uh, you know, you've got the two plugs and then you've got one plug that'll connect to the BMS. So basically it's paralleling the two together. So I don't have to hack and splice. I can easily disconnect and then it'll have an easy disconnect for the BMS as well if I need to disconnect that. Now, because Sid actually had to send in a design so that we knew exactly what pins go to where and what's what and all that other stuff. I had to obviously measure the voltage of the uh, cells because there's 14 cells in here. I get zoomed in a little bit here. There's 14 cells and we've got a total of 24 pins, which means that 10 of the cells, uh, well, technically nine, I guess, are not going to actually be used for the BMS. Uh, there's some kind of proprietary things for this BMS, probably temperature controls or temperature monitoring or, or anything else like that. There is a ground in here, which we believe is pin number two, um, that the BMS will actually have to use. But uh, we did some research on the internet and there was another guy who actually bought a set of these batteries, same exact batteries on same website, Battery Hookup. Um, and we were able to use his information that he had posted and compare it with our information to verify where exactly this stuff was actually going to be connected to. So with collaboration, we were able to determine exactly where the pins go, which ones are the cells, which ones are not cells, etc., etc. So you can see here that I took the measurements um, using a, 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 a multimeter. I took the measurements of the voltage here and I laid them all out in the pins, gave this information to Sid, and then this is the pin layout so if you're looking basically at the uh at the connector exactly like this this is what it would look like here okay so pin number one is in the upper left corner pin number 12 pin 13 and pin 24 so if you're looking at it like this that would be pin number 1 12 
13 and 24. So that corresponds obviously to all of the measurements that I made here. Now you might, you, you look at this and say, well, 26, 26, 26, yeah, 26, 26, 26. Here's a bunch that are zero. So some of these are not going to be used for the BMS. And we figured out what was what basically. And um, so that's it. So the BMS will be able to plug into the custom board that Sid is making. And then I will be able to connect it very easily without having to hack and splice wires up. That's that's my preferred method. I really did not want to hack this wiring up. I, I just, it just to me, it just didn't seem right, I guess. I'd rather leave it as is and be able to just plug it in. So again, we were able to find these connectors and we'll attach them to the custom board, which would then connect to the BMS. So I can easily disconnect anything as needed. And Sean Buckner is from Make Sky Blue. He is producing me a half inch thick aluminum uh, bus bar times two. Two will connect to the positive, two will connect, well, one will connect to the positive, the two positives, one will connect to the two negatives. And they will come out with a couple of spots where I can actually connect my equipment with my fuses attached as well for safety. So he's making me those. So um, I pretty much got, got it all really set. Uh, I took down this section here. If you recall in the other video, I had this big thing here and basically the, the idea was this was going to be my son's bedroom and I was building this for a barn door so that I could have a slider door come across so that was the support for it I removed that that cleared up a whole bunch of room up here so that I have the required uh, height as far as space above the charge controllers uh, as pointed out to me so that I will be able to uh, do this you know more safely so uh, Danielle and I have decided that we are going to purchase another pair of these and I've been following battery hookup because as soon as they go on sale I'm gonna buy another pair of them and have them shipped so we'll have a total of four uh, so I'm building this stand with that in mind and if I do get them obviously Sid he's got his design changed or saved that is so I'll be able to order another uh, you know connector from him I'll get another BMS from Chargery and then obviously I'll have Sean Buckner put me together a bus bar for four batteries versus two. So I'm going to build this stand. Basically, I'm going to build it so that the inverter comes up the same height as those two. It's going to come up so I can slide in another two batteries. So it'll be about right here. So it'll be a lot lower than originally I was planning on being way up here because I was going to have the battery standing up. But I figured this was the best way to do this. So I'm going to bring this up. The inverter should sit about right in this area here. Charge controllers will be, again, on the wall over in this area. But they'll be, you know, the th I think it's 30 inches minimum. They'll be the 30 inches minimum clearance there. So I don't have to worry about, uh, you know, not making code or, or something else like that. It's not still going to be perfect. But it'll be as good as I can possibly make it. Now, as far as the air conditioner, I'm going to be moving that over closer to the wall. And I'm going to be putting a piece of likely going to be just some cheap plexiglass right here to prevent the air conditioner on some of the most humid days from actually spraying water in this direction. It doesn't happen that often unless I've got that air conditioner really cranked down to the lowest and it's been running all day long because it is tipped. So it doesn't happen very often, but sometimes I will actually feel kind of a little bit of a, a spray that'll come out of it if it's extra humid outside. Uh, so I'm going to put a piece of plexiglass right up in this area to prevent anything from basically also to prevent the cold air from blowing right on the batteries and the inverter and such. Um, it's going to basically allow the, the, the cool air to push into this direction. Now, because I need at least 36 inches of clearance from the batteries, that is the accessible point of the battery terminals, need 36 inches of clearance, I am going to have to cut this bench down a little bit here. This bench is actually going to get cut back. That way I've got the required clearance between the batteries themselves and that wall. So yeah, there you have it. Uh, that's the plan now. It's slowly coming along. Again, a lot of the parts are still 
being shipped, so it's I, it's not like I can really do anything right now. I can't start moving the inverter because I'll be offline. I can't start moving the charge controllers because I'll be offline. I have to do all the external wiring. So basically, I'm going to take a day next week, and I'm just going to do it all at once. Um, it's simply because there's so many parts and bits and stuff that I can't do one of them, and it would take me completely offline. So yes, I'm looking forward to it. I'll have the stand all built ready, so all I have to do is literally bring the inverter in. I'll have a piece of board back here to mount the charge controllers and all the other equipment, so I'll have that ready. And I should be all set. Probably notice this big, thick... This is 4 out. This is... Um, I got this from wire... I think it's battery wire cable to go. Um, this stuff is XHHW-2. Uh, very heavy, thick stuff. This is 4 gauge. This is actually what's going to be running from the inverter to the breaker panel it's really thick wire um it's just incredible it's uh, it's got a really nice insulation on it very thick i don't think it's uh sunlight rated like the use two wire that i'm using outside but still pretty nice but anyways um yeah so there you have it uh just slowly working at it and of course i will keep you all updated as time goes on because I know you're all wanting to see this thing run just as much as I am. And it's I've had a lot of help. I've had a lot of feedback. I've had a lot of suggestions. And I have a lot of people to thank. You all know who you are. Um, you know, you guys have been awesome. And I can't wait. The, the plan is, once I get this up and running, I'm going to make some kind of a live stream. Not just a single camera that's pointed at my Wi-Fi board. I want to make a live stream from a cheap laptop that I can live stream multiple cameras that will have views of solar, you know, what's coming in, the inverter itself, obviously, battery voltage, things like that. I want to be able to uh, kind of, you know, demonstrate for you guys uh, what it's like to be completely off the grid. And uh, so I am going to work on that later. That's not a priority right now, but uh, it will be nice to actually be able to turn on the dryer and not have to be like, oh crap, you know, I'm gonna, whatever. <laughs> so it is nice. So when all is said and done, I'll have a total of 4,800 watts of solar. I would like to make another solar array, a third one for the winter. This summer array, you know, the, the fall, spring, and summer array is perfectly adequate for my needs. But in the winter, I'm a little bit concerned. I'm just concerned that, you know, we obviously have to run the heat and things like that. I don't have a wood burner. I don't have a pellet stove, so I can't use wood. I have to fall back on gas from the electric company. So I, I don't know what's going to happen there exactly. But I'm a little bit concerned that in the winter time, I'm not going to have a, an adequate amount of solar to keep the batteries charged. But I will have to play it day by day and actually see what our use is and see how things are. Um, before you know I start adding a whole bunch more solar panels but a winter array would be nice to have um, and actually to, to be perfectly honest I could run that array even in the summer I would get a third charge controller and that charge controller would then obviously I mean these batteries can take uh, I think 150 amps each in and so if I have 150 amps of solar let's just say a round number, 150 amps of solar coming in, and I have four batteries here. Obviously, that's more than uh, enough, so I'm not going to have to worry about burning up the batteries by overcharging them. <sighs> yeah, it's a lot of work, but um, here we are. Anyway, if you have any questions, let me know. 833-GENITRY, toll-free Monday through Friday, 9 to 5. My phone's ringing off the hook, so just be aware. I'm trying to get to everybody doing my absolute best and i'm trying to answer all the text messages and help where i possibly can got a lot going on right now obviously family stuff as well as obviously work stuff so i'm doing the best i can to get everybody taken care of i do appreciate your patience your support and your business i do appreciate every one of you and i'm happy to see when people are going off the grid and it's it's really a wonderful thing i truly believe that our dependency on the grid needs to be eliminated and we can generate our own electricity we can store our own electricity and we can take basically our dependency on someone else completely out thanks again for all your support everyone and take care